Hey, Merry Christmas. I hope we never get over the reality that Corbin just taught us a few minutes ago that Emmanuel, God with us, Jesus has come into the world to take away our sins. We get to walk in freedom. We have hope and grace and mercy every moment of every single day. This is good news. You better believe it is. In case you're wondering, um, this original piece that Grace Daly, she wrote on her own. Uh, she is our partner. She is the, the director of FCA over on our west side with uh, Liberty Middle School and Howard, that, that, that whole region that you've heard me talk about in partnering. Grace Daly, uh, that's her. And she's really humble, but uh, let me just say something. Um, she dropped the mic on that piece. I mean, that, that, that was all original. And if you've been here for the series, you saw she dropped some of the lines in. And, and the reason I said it's all net, she's probably mad at me when I say this, but what she doesn't want anybody to know that uh, for seven years, she was a professional uh, basketball player in the WNBA. And uh, so she was ta- I was talking to her earlier, and I said, listen, it's all net this morning, girl. It's all net. Not that I would know anything about all net. <laughs> I know about all air. <laughs> but, but that was all net. And uh, so, so, so thank you. Um, hey, grab your Bible. Turn on your digital device, or you can see the big Bible on the screen. Uh, uh, We're going to jump into Matthew chapter 2. And I kind of want to just talk about a little something this morning to encourage, to inspire us. Uh, You know, it's not lost on me, right? It's, you know, it's Christmas, and yesterday is kind of like the pinnacle. We've gathered together this morning, and it can, you know, sometimes it can feel like, you know, maybe a little let down. We build all up. I know I said to Linda several times yesterday, I can't believe it. You know, we did all this decorating, and we did all this shopping, and we did all this um, you know, food prep, and we did all this eating, and now it's kind of like, shoo, whoa, whoa, what's going on, right? Uh, kind, of, kind of a deal. And it's also not lost on me that, that, like, we look forward, and, you know, the end of this week is, is a, new, a brand new year, and um, when you think about Christmas, there really could be two experiences, Some of us had all kinds of expectations on what Christmas was going to feel like, an expectation of what maybe would be under the tree for you, an expectation of what it would feel like around the dinner table. Like expectations are part of the human experience. But when when expectations go unmet, boy, it can be really challenging. I mean, some of us were with a loved one, a 93-year-old relative who became sick. Uh, One of our families uh, that we've been praying for, their niece, Caitlin, on Christmas morning, teenage girl, um, passed away. Uh, a lot of unmet expectations, and it's, it's hard to celebrate. You, 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 can, you, you can try to put your game face on, but sometimes it's hard to celebrate. When, when you show up at a place, and, and it doesn't go exactly how you thought. You know what I'm talking about? It, life doesn't always unpack exactly how you want it to be. Even uh, Thursday night, right, Christmas Eve Eve, and, uh, well, I guess we call it Christmas Adam, right? Um, but, but even that, all the communication, like we literally, um, it, it didn't go exactly how we expected. Like our Clydesdales, they were in New York because they thought that it was on Christmas Eve, even though we thought we had communicated over and over and over, it was Christmas Eve Eve. The problem is we never said Christmas Adam to the person who had the Clydesdales, right? Things don't always go exactly how you want them to go. And hey, can you still celebrate? Is Jesus still at a point and place in our life? Right, right. We're trying to get people down to the farm. We said we're going to start at six o'clock. And yeah, you know, we try to honor time and all that kind of stuff because people might have something else going on. Some people still had to get up on Christmas Eve morning and go to work. And it's six o'clock. And I'm telling you, the line of traffic out on 475, it's still there. And then we're getting texts that in the middle of the road on 475, there is a tanker, a, a, a tanker truck broken down in the middle of the road. And people are stuck behind it. Not exactly what we expected. Do we wait? Do we start? Is it time now? Whatever. I don't know, around 12 after or so we finally started, right? And then we got lots and lots of people coming. So we need lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of hot chocolate. And all of our breakers are starting to break. And so we served less than hot chocolate, cooler chocolate, sort of warm hot chocolate, right? I'm just saying, we make our best plans and sometimes... What we expected, you know what I'm talking, I mean, it doesn't always work out exactly. Hey, can we still celebrate? Is it possible? 
I think God's word's gonna speak to us. You got your Bible, check it out, Matthew chapter two. Look at verse one and how appropriate for our Bible study today. After Jesus was born. We are the day after, right? This story is applicable. After Jesus was born, the day after, in Bethlehem, in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi, wise men from the east, came to Jerusalem and asked, Yo, where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. <laughs> when King Herod heard this, he was disturbed. He didn't want to hear about no other king. Right? His identity is wrapped up in, in him being the king, large and in charge. And so when the king is disturbed, notice what happens. <clears throat> All of Jerusalem is also disturbed. When he had called together all the chief priests and te <clears throat> teachers of the law. See, I thought I would... <clears throat> unexpected. I got a frog in my throat. <laughs> Excuse me. I can't make this stuff up. <laughs> Thank you, Linda. <clears throat> Put it on the table. Yeah, hey, is that a new outfit? Did you get that for Christmas? Yes, I did. It looks nice. <laughs> did someone just say that so wrong? <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about can you still celebrate in unmet expectations? <laughs> all right, so, hey, verse 4. When he had called together all the people, chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them, hey, yo, where is this Messiah that's be born? He does not have good intentions here. Well, in Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. And this is actually in the Bible in, in Micah. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least amongst the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Thousands of years before Jesus is born, the prophet Micah is putting Jesus in play. Verse 7, then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Yo, guys, go and search out carefully for this child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I, too, can go and worship him. He, he's, he's lying. He's got really bad intentions here. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were, there it is, overjoyed on coming to the house they saw the child with his mother, Mary. And here's some observations that I think maybe from God's word we can write down. I think it's applicable for the day after, and I also think this is really applicable in setting us up uh, for 2022. Here's some, here's some thoughts, right? The, the whole Bible study is about what do you do when you have unexpected circumstances, when things in a marriage, in your health, your life, when things don't go exactly, what do you do? And what can we learn from the wise men? So here, write a few things down. Number one is this. Is wise men still found God in the unexpected circumstances? I mean, they're following this star. They expect to find a king, and they find a stable. A dirty, smelly stable. A poor family, a teenage girl, this little baby wrapped in rags. And in the midst of that scene, they still find God. In my world, I would have looked over at Linda and said, hey, Linda, did you, did you program in like the right uh, address? Because this doesn't seem right. This doesn't feel right. This doesn't look right to me. Yo, Siri, I asked for you to get me to the king's address. And now I'm in a barnyard, this doesn't make no sense at all. However, their actions from God's word revealed they didn't allow, watch this, their circumstances to dictate their celebration. Now that's important for us. I, I'm not minimizing your circumstances. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not putting them in the small screen of your life. Listen, your circumstances, my circumstances, our circumstances, they are large on the screen of our life. But because of Jesus, we do not have to minimize them. We can still celebrate regardless 
of those circumstances. Here, go back to your Bible. Look at Matthew chapter 2 in verse 11. What did they do? They bowed down and they worshiped him. They showed up and they're looking for a king and they find this little baby in a barnyard. This didn't make a lot of sense, but they found God in the middle of unmet experience expectations that's why we've been saying this entire bible study your experience with god your experience with christ opens your eyes to christ here write a second thing down wise men right they show up it's unmet expectations this is not what we were thinking this is not how i thought the marriage was going to be this is not how i thought my new job was going to be i didn't think this was going to be like this this house that we're now in i did not expect this And notice what they did. They still gave their best gift to God. Go back to your Bibles, Matthew 2. They bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, which represents royalty. The royalty kings deserved gold. They still, it's a baby. He's in a a trough that's used for, for giving water to animals, but they didn't pull back, right? Isn't that our tendency? When we find ourselves in an unmet expectation, our temptation is to pull up a little bit. I'm not gonna lean all in. I don't know how this is gonna work out. This is not what I, I thought that it would look like. This is not how I, I, I thought. I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna hold back a little bit. I'm gonna see how this plays out. And we get hesitant to really give our best. It seems like this situation that I'm in, this doesn't, this doesn't deserve, this doesn't deserve my, my best. But not, not so much with them. They, they still give everything, right? They give the gold, they give the frankincense. The frankincense, it's, it's a picture of, of God's deity, right? If you would have gone to the temple, frankincense, this incense would be burning as an offering of sacrifice as they prayed to, to God. And then the whole thing, right? The myrrh, like anybody know Shout out if you do. Anybody know what myrrh really is? Shout it out. Anybody take a guess? Online? Drop something for me online. What do you think myrrh? Anybody have a guess? From all your years in church. What's that? Shout it out. Just Who cares if you're wrong? Perfume? Who knows, right? You ready for this? This is absolutely crazy. It's embalming ointment. Embalming ointment. I bet you didn't go to a birthday party and bring embalming ointment. <laughs> but incredibly valuable. One, of course, right, they didn't have the modern technology we have today. And so if a person dies, right, when a person dies, the idea of, of, of having their body covered with this ointment so it didn't smell, the embarrassment of the smell. Remember the whole story of Lazarus? And they said, no, 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 don't roll away the stone. He's going to be smelling bad, right? Watch this. It's prophetic. Jesus was born to die. Jesus was born on Christmas Day, and we celebrate, and we should celebrate, that Emmanuel, God is with us, right? That Jesus has come to take away the sins of the world, but realize it didn't stop on Christmas Day. He would step out for the next 33 years and live his life, be tempted in the same way that you and I have been tempted, but never sin. And one day to stretch out his arms across the cross to say to the whole world, I love you so much that I will give my one and only life for you. I didn't come into this world to condemn the world. I came that the world might be saved through me. I'm just saying sometimes when you show up at work, at a holiday celebration, in a marriage with your kids, with your grown parents, we can get really disappointed. And the temptation is to pull up, not to give our, our best. Let, let me give you a third thing if you want to write it down. Um, the wise men, at the end of the day, they made the most important decision, right? They, they, they showed up. It's not exactly what they thought, but they looked for God. We're going to find God in this. They worshiped him. They showed up, and they still, right, they still gave their very best gifts. They didn't pull up kind of like, oh, all right. But here's the most important thing, is at the end of the day, they decided to follow God at his word more than Herod at his word. Here, go back to your Bible. Matthew chapter 2 and verse 8. In verse 12, go, remember, remember Herod said, go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. And, having, and in verse 12, and having been warned in a dream 
So God goes to the wise men in a dream, verse 12, being warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Now we look at the story backwards, right? But in real time, think about it. They could have thought, wait a second, you know, staying, staying connected to the king, I mean, it's, it's the upward trajectory in our career. I mean, if we, don't, if we don't obey the king, what might be lost? What risk? What status? We certainly don't want to be on the outside. We want to be on the inside. But at the end of the day, they decided that they would trust God at his word. God told us that Herod is up to something that's not best. You need to go a different way. And so they went a different way way they trusted God at his word more than Herod the power source the one that could have made their lives even more wealthier even more quote earthly blessed but they trusted God at his word these wise men they showed up on that first Christmas day and it was not at all what they expected they had followed a star and they found a stable they thought they were going to find a king and they found a child they, they thought they were stepping into royalty, and it was a teenage girl and her young groom, and they were penniless. They were in a barnyard. It wasn't exactly, it wasn't exactly, and I guarantee you, some of us right now, you've had that in 21. Some of you are in that season right now. Your life is not exactly what you thought, and I guarantee you, some of us will step out into 22, and you'll have unmet expectations, and the question is, how do you still celebrate? How do you still have the same life experience? I'm not asking you to minimize this pain. I'm not asking you to, to, to set this to the side, to pretend that it didn't happen. Oh, it did happen. You wouldn't have signed up for it. You, you, you're, you're sad, but it has happened. And we can live in such a way, although this has happened, I will have joy in spite of. Some of you have heard me say, and, and I'm a little careful, I don't want it to always tell kind of my hurts and boo-boos, but I mean, 21 has been my most difficult year. 20 with COVID and all that, it wasn't all that challenging. Other years in my life have been, 21 um, has been the most challenging year physically uh, in my life. The simple things, simple things like yesterday. Normally on Christmas Day, my family, we do a polar bear swim. What's the big deal about doing a polar bear? I stand on the side of the pool and I jump into the water. It's not that challenging. But physically, I'm not in a place even to do something like that because of what I've been going through with the discs um, that are in my, in my neck. And they're like, my goodness, God, are you telling me? My name's Mark David Cummins. I'm a United States Marine. I'm an Ironman athlete. And then people tell me, well, you know, Mark, you're getting older. <laughs> <laughs> I have all kinds of bad words from being a Marine coming into my mind. It's like, I do not want to think about that at all. Right? I, don't, I don't want that as an excuse, right? Kind of a life, right? I'm just saying, I've had to pra I, I'm, I'm standing before you this morning because I've had to practice this with every ounce of my being. Because it's easy to get your identity, to get my identity as, a, as I'm athletic, I'm physically fit, right? And now that I can't do that, hello, Cummins, can you still celebrate Jesus as much? Ooh, baby, me and God have had some big time talks about that. My journal, all kinds of things. I get exposed, I get exposed. So my question to me, to us, is how do you turn unexpected circumstances into a celebration? If you got some, 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 some pencil left, let me, uh, let me give you a couple things just to write down. How do we learn from the wise men? And how do we, knowing that we're gonna have unmet expectations today, this coming week, in 22, 22, how do we still celebrate even when what we expected doesn't go the way that we thought it was going to go? Number one, if you want to write it down, is this. Is this. You got to crave God in whatever circumstance you find yourself. You got to crave him. I'm talking about craving. Like, when you crave something, Linda can hide it any place she wants in my house. I'm finding it. <laughs> I'm finding it I, I'm, I'm because, because I, I, I crave it. I don't know what you all did on Christmas Eve, but like Linda, for the first time, she made this uh, chicuttery. Is that how you say that word? Chicuttery board, right? What are you all laughing at? It's a thing. 
It's a thing, right? But it's like, it's like little meat, and you cut it all up, and it's cheeses, and she had like olives filled with blue cheese, and she, then she had this, um, like this pot in the middle, and it, it had, um, uh, what do you call that chocolate? Chocolate fondue. It was melted, and she had, she had pineapples and strawberries and blueberries and mango and bananas, right? And then she had the, uh, the coconut shrimp thing, right? Right, the coconut shrimp thing, and then um, there was something else. Uh, oh, the, what's those dumpling things called? They're dumplings. <laughs> all, all this is on, my, all this is on our, our like island in our kitchen. Can I tell you what's, I, the devil is in charcuterie boards. Do you know why? It's all cut up in little pieces, so you think you're not eating much. I'm telling you, that night I'm, I'm reaching for, uh, what's that medicine we take that I chew? Pepsid AC? Oh my. I mean, it was. <sighs> I, mean, I, I was craving. I wasn't stopping it. I, I, everything, everything inside of me said, come and slow it down, big boy. Hey, t- take a break. Uh, <laughs> my taste buds were large and in charge. You know what I'm saying? I craved it. The wise men, they show up at this scene. It's not what they expected at, at all. But in the midst of it, they still craved God. That's how you find them. I'm going to tell you something. If you crave God, you're going to find God. Just like if you craved whatever piece of food or, or whatever the, you're looking for, you find, when you search for it, with all of you, you find it. And so in the midst of maybe a disappointing year, or maybe it's not what you expected, or your, your health or relationships, the pandemic, you thought, for sure, right? For sure we would be over this by now, or, or the government and all the things that's going on. L- l- listen. In the midst of all of that chaos, crave God. Watch how your whole world, I'm not saying those circumstances would change. They might get worse. But when you crave him and his presence and his power and he shows up, check out Psalm 63 and 1 from the message. God, you are my God. I can't get enough of you. I've worked up such a hunger and thirst for God. Imagine how all of our lives go to a whole nother level if we wake up every day and we say, listen, I can't get enough of God. I mean, I've said that about other things, but when's the last time you've said that about God? I can't get enough of God. I crave him. I want him. Matthew 6 and 33, the Bible says, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these other things will be added unto us. I'm just saying... How, how do you turn unexpected circumstances into a celebration? You, just, you, you start by, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to crave him. You crave God the way you crave fill in the blank. A sport, a hobby, uh, a substance, uh, money, whatever that thing is in life that you've craved, you just flip that script and you crave God and you watch your celebration go to a whole other level. Here, write a second thing down. It's this. Is give God your best regardless of the circumstances. That's how you keep celebrating. You give God that wise men, they showed up. It's not what they expected, but they still gave their, their very best. I, I, I get it. There's, there's pressure. When things don't go exactly how we want, there's pressure to pull up, to throw in the towel, not to give our best. Shameless plug, recommendation. We went yesterday afternoon, first time in two years, to the movie theater. And uh, we saw the American underdog, the Kurt Warner story. Phenomenal film, uh, great for the family, really good. And there was plenty of times in that story where Kurt had an opportunity to throw in the towel. That life wasn't how he, ex- he expected to be in the NFL. And he goes to uh, Division I, AA something, nowhere, anywhere, school in Iowa. He's constantly being overlooked all the way along the way. It does not look like it's going to turn out good for him. Lots of opportunities to stop giving his best. But the rest of the story, right? 12 years in the NFL, two-time Super Bowl winner, in the Hall of Fame, simply because he chose, in unmet expectations, he chose to continue to give his very best. Check out 1 Corinthians 10 and 31. The Bible says this, whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Whatever it is that you're doing, do everything. Worship is not just a song on Sunday morning. Worship is my attitude, how I show up, how I think, how I feel, how I act. My body's tired when I'm hungry. I do all things for the glory of God. You'll never have the life you want 
until you love the life that God's given you. Hey, check this out. You'll never have the wife that you want until you love the wife that you have. You'll never have the husband that you want until you love the husband that you have. You'll never love the car that you to fill in the blank, whatever it is, until you and I, you'll never have the job. You'll never have the health. You'll never have whatever until you stop and own this right here. I will choose and love this place that I'm in, these circumstances. I didn't ask for it. Maybe it's unfair. Maybe it's unjust. But the temptation of human beings is when things aren't going how we want them to be is we pull up. We give less than our best. But the wise men teach us, if you want to keep celebrating, you've got to give your best regardless of the circumstances. The mess. We want to take the mess out of everything. But hear me. The mess is in the message. You can't spell the word message without mess. Stop messing with the mess. Leave the mess in the message. The gospel of Jesus is he came because our lives as humans is messy. Stop trying to clean it all up and just invite Jesus to get in the middle of the mess because the message is there is hope and there's freedom when Jesus gets in the middle. All right, let me give you one more thing and we'll uh, get on our way. Uh, how, do you, how do you turn unexpected... <laughs> circumstances into a time of celebration. Look for God. Crave him. Crave him, right? Crave him. Still give your best. Here's the third thing. This might be the hardest thing I could ask of you today, but I'm telling you right now, the reason you're not experiencing life at its fullest is because of this right here, what I'm about to say. It's not because of the pandemic. It's not because of vaccinations. It's not because of the media. It's not because of the government. All the things you want to pin. There's lots. It's not because of injustices. It's not because of, of, of racial injustices. It's not because of all the things that are Lots of crazy things happening in the world. Your pressure point is what I'm about to tell you right now. Everything that you want and hope for in life is wrapped up in what the wise men modeled for us. It's simply this. Choose to follow God at his word. The only reason any of us are living less than best in life is because we've chosen not to follow God at his word. Even if what you're going through is terrible, wait a second, PMC, wait a second. Look at my life, and I've chosen to follow God at his word, and look how it's all, wait, 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 wait. You've chosen to follow God at his word. Right now, you're in a tough spot. Right now, you know, you're experiencing pain and sorrow and loss. Your spouse doesn't want to be with you. Someone said this. Someone fired you. Because I, I get it. You're in the middle of it right now. But why would you stop following God at his word? Keep following God at his word. Read the book of Job. For 41 chapters, it's totally jacked up. For 41 chapters, his life looked like it's coming in. He's lost everything. But you get to the end of Job, Job chapter 42, in the end, God blessed him with twice as much as he had in the beginning, simply because he chose when his wife turned on him and his friends turned on him, when he turned on himself, he kept slowly but surely trusting God at his word. The whole problem in the universe Whatever you're suffering, whatever pain point came because our first mom and dad did not trust God at his word. And every pain point and every problem ever since is because we don't listen to God at his word. These wise men took God at his word, trusted. They followed the star. They arrived. It was a stable, unmet expectations. They began to go back towards Herod. God shows up and says, listen, I can't explain all the details right now. Go a different way. They didn't have a conversation. They didn't Google it. They just trusted God at his word, and it changed them. Check out what God's word says in Psalms 119 and 105. Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. This is God's word. All scripture is God-breathed and useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Isaiah 48 and 17. I am the Lord your God who teaches you what is best for you, who directs you in the way you should go. And perhaps a verse that has really spoken to me this week in Psalm 16 and 8. I know the Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken, for he is right beside me. 
No wonder my heart is glad and I rejoice. My body rests in safety. Think about that. I know the Lord is always with me. Do you? I will not be shaken, for he is right beside me. How would your whole world begin to change if, you began, if we began to live each and every day? I really believe wherever I'm going, whatever I'm going through, he's right beside me. No wonder my heart is glad. No wonder I got some hip in my hop and the hippie. No wonder I feel it. No wonder I, I'm, I'm, I got the Lord right with me. What could, what could happen to me? That's your God. That, that's, that, that, that's not just a sermon on a Sunday. That's your God. Maybe the reason our heart isn't glad, maybe the reason we're having a hard time rejoicing, maybe your body isn't resting in safety because we really don't live day by day believing that the Lord is right next to me. I mean, why wouldn't we think that? You haven't woken up and been with God in how many days, weeks, months, years? This daily devotion time isn't something that a preacher says just to do. I'm talking about this is the life of you. This is God's word to you. It guides us. It directs us. It strengthens us. It encourages us. It inspires me. It protects me. It provides for me. This is my source. This is my strength. When I face unmet expectations, it is the word of God that gives me strength and hope and mercy and grace along the way. Follow him at his word. The wise men, they changed directions. I don't know why that's so hard for us, except for I think it's just human. We think this way's the best way, my way's the best way. I'm going, I'm not changing for nobody, nothing. The older we get, the harder it is. But they changed directions that day. And I can't help but think on this last Sunday in 21, maybe you're here in person or you're joining online. and You need to change directions. You, you need to turn from your ways, turn to begin following Jesus. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God, Merry Christmas to you. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Today you can begin a relationship. The Bible says we've all sinned, every single one of us. In this gathering online, we've all sinned and we all come short of God's glory. But the good news is Jesus came not to condemn us. Jesus came that we might be saved. God wants you and I in his family. And so the Bible says that if we would confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that Jesus Christ is God's son, you can be a part of that family. So today, if you'd like to begin a relationship with Jesus, right where you're sitting, where you're watching online, just say, hey, God, it's me. I've sinned, and I believe that you died on that cross for me. And I invite you, Jesus, into my life. Save me on this day after your birthday. And to everybody who's praying that prayer, welcome to God's family. I'd like to help you continue to grow in following Jesus. You can use the connection card at your chair, or you can just text me in the privacy of your own phone, the word TODAY to 63566, and I'll help you continue to follow after Jesus. Some of us need to change directions from flying under the radar in following Jesus to getting a little bit more vocal about it. Some of you need to be baptized. Some of you need to let the whole world know, let your family and your friends. You can be baptized. You can send the word baptism to the word to 63566. We'll help you. We'll help you. We'll set you up. Let me, I, I'll tell you this. Staying encouraged, being able to celebrate in unmet expectations is always best in a group. In 22, maybe you joining a small group or being more committed to the group that you're in. If you'll just send the word groups to 63566, we're gonna, we're gonna help you grow and go and let me just let me just say this without it feeling too cheesy the wise men showed up they gave their best gifts right I encourage you thank you many of you have already given your best gifts from my understanding I think we're somewhere around 45 uh, thousand on our on our Christmas Eve uh, we put 85 thousand out there as a goal you got to have a goal got to shoot for something and many of you have given already thank you um, we cut a check uh, last week even before I think last week our, we were at like maybe even $4,000 and a lot came in this past week and um, we, we had the need up in Kentucky and we found a church and uh, so we cut a check uh, for 10000 The money hadn't even come in yet but we cut the check for 10000 and I got a note back from their, their, the, the pastor that we're working with there and he was just amazed. 
I, I was shocked. I thought, man, 10,000. I told him, listen, hopefully more will come in and we'll send you more. Hey, hey let me tell you something about the, the churches in Kentucky, the communities in Kentucky. They're still, you might not see it on your television set. They're still devastated. They're still brothers. They're still sisters. They're still Americans. And so however you give generously to the Jesus at the top offering, um, I, you know, I, I've, I've been hearing from, from people that uh, there's people in the community that, that um, want to know about Jesus. And I don't know how and, and how God will open up. Maybe it's transportation. Maybe we need to go out to the people and provide transportation to get them here on Sunday. Maybe it's setting up modems in their house. I don't know. All I know is this, is let's pull our resources together. Let's make 22 the kind of year where we put all of our efforts in so that men and women, boys and girls who don't know Jesus, how selfish of me. I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. So sorry about everybody else. Let me know how it is in hell. I'll send you a No, I want everybody to know I'm going to leverage my life. So stand with me. And Corbin and the team, they're going to lead us in this song that's familiar. Simply simply says this, that he is our way maker. No matter what you're going through, ultimately, our way maker.